Hello, we are currently in a cost of living crisis. You've got your van, but a holiday or even a weekend away may well seem too expensive. Well, today I'm gonna to be showing some tips and advice, planning how you can get away for a few days, saving money on fuel, food, where to stay, and some ideas of what to do when you get there. Some ideas that might make you just think, that's a good idea, I can save a few quid here. I, like many of you, have a family, so stealth camping in the middle of nowhere without permission isn't particularly something I fancy doing. So what options do we have? Well, there's a few apps and websites which you can use. Park for night, stay free, are just a few of these apps to find a place to stay, but these are generally without the owner's permission. So still you're in that situation where actually you could potentially still be moved on. Alternatively, there's the Brit Stops book, which has over a thousand places for you to stay, which are generally in pub car parks, vineyards, some weird and wonderful places where you can stay, but you do actually have the landlord's permission, the owner's permission to actually stay at the premises. So you've not got that risk of actually being booted away in the middle of the night. Now, these aren't exactly free because you do have to pay about 35 pounds for the book, but that book does last you a whole year. In the book, each of the premises where you can stay has actually got a facilities key, so it shows you whether there's running water, whether there's toilets, whether there's electricity. So you know actually what's going to be there when you get there. But another alternative, if you didn't want to buy this book, there is actually a Facebook group, UK Pub Stopover Reviews for Motorhome and Camper Vans. And you can find reviews on here of places where people have stayed, what they thought of them, what they actually got at the premises, whether they'd stay there again. It's just another option which you can use. But a lot of these places which people are reviewing are very good in great locations. So do check that out if, if that's the kind of thing you want. But you might want more than a car park. You might want something with proper facilities, toilets, warm showers, maybe a play park or even a swimming pool, meaning you're gonna want a campsite. Now, a website which you can find a good campsite on is called pitchup.com. Now, this has been going for many, many years and I think, looking at it, I've probably been using it from the start. You can find some really good campsites on there. It lists over 2,000 campsites, I think it is, and it's got the full facilities list on there. So what amenities are actually at the site, whether there's a play park, whether there's a swimming pool, whether there's a clubhouse, and there's lots of different price ranges. There's loads of information for you to check out, so it's a really good source of information to choose where you're gonna stay. There's a few different options for you there, some from free, some to ones which you have to pay for, but there will be something there to suit your needs and suit your budget but we do still have to get there. And as we know in recent times, the price of fuel has actually skyrocketed, but I do actually have a couple of ways you can actually save a little bit of money on that as well. I will come on to that in a moment, but before you set off, there's a few things which you need to plan and do. I have a couple of recent videos which I've done have actually been how to utilize the space in your van by packing. And before that, actually some items which you do need to take. And this is a thing here, you only need to take things you actually need. You don't want to be taking more gear than you actually need. If you're not gonna use it, then don't take it. You're only gonna be adding weight to your van. And the more weight you've got in the van, the more energy it needs to drive, which is obviously the fuel. Traveling as light as you possibly can, only taking things which you need is gonna help with this. If you're not gonna be going out on your kayaks and your paddle boards and your surfboards and your, your pedal bikes, don't take them. The van's not exactly aerodynamic as it is, never mind if you've got some canoes and bikes on the bike and the additional weight that means. Don't take them. If you're not gonna use them, don't take them. And also quite similar to this, making sure that your tires are inflated. I've not actually got the statistics, but the difference between your miles per gallon with correctly inflated tires to ones which are not correctly inflated can be quite drastic. So make sure that your tires are to the correct pressure for the wheel size which you've got on your van. Now, you know, obviously I use my Ryobi inflator, which is absolutely perfect because I can pump them up if needed. It's got the digital gauge on there, really handy device. But when you actually go into your petrol station, a lot of them do have free air to pump up your tires. In fact, they don't anymore, do they? I have noticed recently that that air and water is actually no longer free anymore. But if you've got a pump at home, make sure they're actually inflated to the correct pressures before you do actually set off. And again, talking about water, if you've got onboard water tanks on your van, do you need to be traveling with all those liters of water in the van? Or is there a possibility you can actually top it up when you get to site? Now, maybe you are gonna be wanting to stop in on your journey and having a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or something, so you might need a bit of water in there. 
but you certainly won't need it full. Just make sure you've got a couple of liters in there if that is what you are gonna be doing. Otherwise, leave it empty and fill it up on site because that additional weight will reduce the fuel consumption which you're gonna get out of your vehicle. And I've just mentioned stopping. Now, if you are stopping at a service station, you certainly don't wanna be buying any snacks from there. Four pound for a pack of Haribo, two pound for a chocolate bar. The prices can be extremely extortionate depending on which one you go into. So make sure you pack lots of snacks before you set off. Pack a variety, pack some different things which you could potentially be eating so you're not gonna have that temptation of paying way over the odds when you stop to, for a toilet break one of the service stations. And if you are perhaps going on a longer journey and you're probably gonna be stopping around a mealtime, why don't you plan ahead? Why don't you make some sandwiches so you can take them with you, some crisps, some fruit, so you can actually have something already prepared. It's gonna save you a lot of money actually preparing something at home than it is stopping at a service station. And you can also pack some lighter meals, some perhaps some breakfast cereals, some porridge oats, some other breakfast items, maybe some fast cut pasta, because some of the pastas which you get historically have been cooking 10 to 15 minutes, but now they've got the fast cut ones which cook in four or five minutes, which is obviously gonna save you on your gas consumption when you actually get to site. Put them in your bag, maybe some pot noodles, not particularly the fan myself, but the kids are. So just some items like that, which you could potentially have as some lighter meals when you get to site. Just make sure you plan that journey before you leave home. And that also includes planning the route. Now, just thinking about some of the areas which we are down here in Devon and Cornwall, if you actually look at a map on the best place to get somewhere and then actually tap it into the sat-nav, the sat-nav might send you some really, really bizarre routes. So make sure you just have a look where you're gonna go. Even if it is just on Google Maps or Apple Maps or something like that, just have a rough idea of where you're gonna go because going off the beaten track and getting stuck behind a tractor or something like that when you don't actually need to, is just gonna frustrate you and obviously cost you a bit more fuel. And the time you set off can be a big factor. If you've got a straight run, however, many miles it is from your starting point to your destination, then fuel consumption is gonna be all right. But if you're gonna be stop starting traffic, crawling along because you're in rush hour traffic when you've hit one of the big cities, it's not gonna do you any good. So why don't you plan your journey to make sure that you're, you're leaving at a time where you're not gonna be hitting the rush hour at a certain place? You know, could you leave quite early in the morning to make sure that you're not gonna be hitting a lot of that traffic? or time the time it right, that actually, if I am coming to Devon and Cornwall, I don't wanna be hitting Bristol at a certain time because it's gonna be really busy. So just think ahead and plan. And talking about Bristol, I know a few people recently have actually been caught out with a Bristol clean air zone charge, costing them a lot of money because they've been fined because they hadn't actually declared that they were actually gonna be driving through it. And this is actually including some vehicles which you would have thought have been exempt. I've not looked into it, but that's something which you need to be aware of. If you're going to be going towards any of the bigger cities, make sure that you plan that there isn't any clean air zones because you could be getting charged. You need to make sure that you pay that fee at the appropriate time so you're not hit with a big fine afterwards. Just plan, plan, plan. And that obviously goes for fuel. You're probably gonna have filled up before you set off. Most of us do. Most of us have got our favorite fuel station where we generally get our petrol or diesel from. But if you're going to a location where you don't know the area and you might just be sticking to the, the main routes, then you might be paying a lot more for your petrol and diesel. Petrol prices app and obviously website, this is really good for finding the best price fuel stations from where you actually are and where you're gonna be going to. This can actually save you several pence on a litre of whatever fuel it is you're gonna be needing. So planning ahead on this can actually add up and save you some money. And if you are going on a longer journey and you're gonna be going on the motorway and you're thinking about stopping maybe on a, a dual carriageway for some fuel, you might be paying a good 20 pence more on the, that main artery than you would do if you just went maybe a mile off the beaten track. Now, obviously you don't want to be traveling 10 miles in a particular direction to save some fuel because it's not gonna be cost effective. But if you look on your petrol prices app and you can see on the motorway it's, it's £1.70 a litre, and then you look at the app and actually 0.3 of a mile away, just off the motorway, there is actually a fuel station which is 20 pence less, then you could actually save yourself some money, especially if you've got 
a bigger tank and onto food as nice as it would be to eat out at one of the celebrity chef's restaurants, which we've actually got quite an abundance of down here in Devon and Cornwall, it is going to cost you a significant amount of money. But just because you're not going to be eating one of these places, it doesn't mean you're not actually going to eat well. Using your hub in your camper van, a portable barbecue like a Kadak or a charcoal grill, you can still cook some really good, nutritious, tasty meals. You can have your usual barbecue chicken, steak, burgers, sausages, pork, peppers, sweet corn. You can still have all that, but you can also cook some great meals utilizing various different pots and pans, skewers, pizza stones, paella dishes, griddle pans. These items can ensure that you make some really good tasty meals, just like you can actually cook at home. Yeah, you can actually cook roast dinners while you're out in your camper van. Not the easiest thing to do, but you can do it. You've got the beer can chicken. You can actually cook chicken by using a beer can. It's things like that, really good things to do. Find out before you leave where the local supermarkets are. You don't have to be shopping at one of the expensive supermarkets, which you will find in certain areas. Go out and find your, your Aldi's, your Lidl's, your more competitively priced shops, or even better, local farmers and local farm shops. There are lots of locally grown and locally produced goods, really nice tasty foods, and you'd probably actually be surprised at some of the prices. I know a few of them around some of the areas which we visit, and the food is exceptional, really nice and tasty. You don't have to eat out if you've got a camper van. It is not basic cooking facilities. The pans and things you can get, you can really create some really, really good meals these days. Plan it before you go. Look up these places to buy your food from. And if you've not got one of these pans, invest in one. A lot of people talk about the Ridge Monkey and how good it is. Not actually got one myself, but the amount of people who say, that's actually my favorite gadget in the whole van. Mustn't be able to go wrong with it, can you? Or is there a better alternative? Don't know, you tell me, what do you think? Anyway, perfect, so now we've managed our food, we've managed our accommodation, our fuel costs, but what about having fun? What about activities which we can do? Well, evenings are pretty easy, just sit around your fire pit, chill out and watch the sun go down. But maybe you wanna be doing more than that and especially during the day. And really, this all depends actually where you're going to be going. Now, there's this wonderful thing called the internet and you can Google things. So looking locally here, we've got Visit Cornwall and Visit Devon and the website's here to show you places which you can go and visit. Now, if you are gonna be coming to Devon and Cornwall and seeing the attractions which we've got here, maybe it's Creeley or Woodlands for your activities, National Marine Aquarium, Dartmoor Zoo or somewhere like that. These places often have a cheaper ticket price if you buy in advance. So if you buy, plan ahead and buy it before the day you go, you can save yourself a few quid. Now additionally, some of these places, if you look carefully, that ticket is valid for maybe seven days. Some of them, like the Eden Project, I think it is, they have a ticket which is valid for a whole year. So think about that. And if you think that's a ticket for a seven day ticket, maybe on the first day we get there, we might go. Maybe on day four or five, we might want to go again. So you can plan out your journeys like that. But maybe you don't want to be doing things like that. Maybe you want to be getting out to around the beach locations. And again, here, there's lots of things to do. You can hire surfboards, bodyboards, paddle boards. You can get out in kayaks and explore the lovely coastline which we've got down here, whether that be the North Coast or the South Coast. There are lots and lots of things for you to do. And it isn't actually going to cost you the earth to do that. But if you didn't want to pay anything, then you could just go to these beaches and just explore the coastline. There's lots of rock pools, lots of really nice things to see, which I'm going to be bringing in a future video. But some of these rock pools, you can actually swim in them. The one at Trianon is really, really popular. Or you've got the famous one at Travon, which is featured in a couple of films and TV programs, which my daughter watches. These are really good places to go, or even just walking around the, say, the southwest coast path. And for these coastal walks, and for actually getting free entry into car parks, the National Trust, yes, and I know that is actually going to cost money, but from speaking to a lot of people at various different events, a lot of people are already National Trust members anyway, because over a period of a year, you're probably actually going to be saving money on visiting these places because you're not having to pay for the car parks and things like that. Have a look at the website, have a look at the places which they've got if you've not got the membership, and just see 
what's around you locally, first of all, to see if you could actually utilize it locally. And then if you have got a membership, have a look at what's in the area which you're going to. You might find some lovely places of interest, some castles, or even if it's just a beach car park. Some of these beach car parks can cost you quite a few quid a day. So if you can find one which is owned by the National Trust, then winner, winner, you could be saving yourself some money. You can go away without it costing the earth. You can have a really good time. You can have some really good food and stay in some nice locations. But it's all about plan, plan, plan. You need to make sure that you plan ahead before you go, which includes everything that you need to take. And if you need some ideas on that, you can have a look at that video here. Thanks for watching. Take care. I hope to see you soon.